This is the fourth in a series of videos discussing fractional factorial designs. So before watching this video, you should have watched the previous three and you should have read the notes Fractional Factorial Designs Part 1 and Part 2. In the previous video, number three, we discussed the analysis of the eye movement experiment. And remember, in this experiment, they started with a resolution 3 design, a 2 to the 7th minus 4, did the analysis, and there was so much aliasing between main effects and two-way interactions, it was impossible to tell what the real effects were. In other words, there was just far too much aliasing to sort it all out. And what they did was add an additional 8 runs for a total of 16, that broke the aliases between the main effects and two-way interactions. As I mentioned, what they did, they took the design from resolution 3 to resolution 4. They did this through a strategy called folding over. And this works well when you start with small fractions of a design. Basically, just take your original design and reverse the high and low settings for each factor. And it's like folding the design over to create a mirror image. So folding over is known that it will take a resolution 3 to re resolution 4. It isn't used beyond resolution 3 because like for resolution 4 if you folded it over there's no guarantee what one would end up with. So the fold over strategy works well uh, for resolution 3 in terms of sequential experimentation. Folding over is just one form of what we call augmentation. Quite often, instead of doing a new experiment, if we find that the present one is not sufficient to identify all the important effects or if we find there's lack of fit and we need to add additional terms that would require additional runs, we can augment the experiment. And folding over is just one of the strategies that can be used. In fact, in the Jump DOE menu, there is a platform called Augmentation or Design Augmentation. And I'm going to illustrate it using the coding example, the fractional factorial we discussed in the second video. This was a six-factor experiment, and they ran uh, a resolution 3, 2 to the 6th minus 3. So main effects were aliased with two-way interactions. So when we analyzed the experiment, we discovered we could not sort out which main effects in which two-way interactions were significant, we were basically stuck. So what we could do since the coding experiment was resolution 3, we could fold it over and create a resolution 4 experiment. Okay. So basically I'm going to do this in jump and I just wanted to show you there are a number of ways to augment designs. Okay. You could replicate it. Well, you should have done that when you created it. You could add center points. Hopefully, again, you'd do that when you create the design. And the last three are really very useful. They're the ones I'll focus on. Fold over, only useful for a resolution 3 design. Add axial, that means add additional trials that will be used only to estimate second order or quadratic effects. So sometimes if you have lack of fit after running a two-level design, we can add what are called axial points and that let us, lets us estimate squared terms to take care of possible curvature. And then something that Jump provides is called Augment, where you actually tell Jump, here are the effects that I want to estimate, and then Jump will go ahead and find additional runs that will let you estimate those effects. The idea is we don't toss out our original experiment, we keep it, and then we add runs to it. 
In fact, that's why sequential experimentation can be so efficient. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start with the eye movement experiment. So remember, the original design is a resolution 3, 2 to the 7th minus 4, and there's heavy aliasing of the main effects in two-way interactions. So I'm going to go to Analyze, I'm sorry, DOE to the left, go down near the bottom to where it says Augment Design. So time is our response, and I do want to use all the factors because I have no idea what main effects and what two-way interactions are really significant. Click OK. So jump sets up the factor table. Always select the option to group the new runs into a separate table. And then here are some options. If it's resolution 3, the design you have, you can do fold over. So I'm going to select fold over. Okay. And I'm going to fold over all of the factors. Again, I have no idea what main effects might be important. Okay. So there is the new design. And this is actually the design that was used to do the second eye movement experiment. This design is now resolution 4. Okay. There is only aliasing between the two-way interactions. Okay. And if you want, to, so you can see, I actually can't see it very well here. So the main effects are not aliased with two-way interactions, but the two-way interactions have aliases um, with each other. What we're hoping, and what you saw happen when we analyzed the bigger experiment, all of the main effects dropped out except for B and D and the interaction. Well, that is simply uh, what's called foldover. And again, resolution 3 designs, this is a good strategy to take it to resolution 4. Okay. Well, what else could we do? Well, suppose, I'll just make the table and I'll illustrate. I have this new design and I do the trials and I discover that there's significant lack of fit and I need to estimate squared terms. Well, just to illustrate, I'll go back to DOE, go down to Augment, okay, and it's going to pick up the most recent table it can find. So I'll put in my seven factors again. Time is a response. And by the way, sometimes you may have eliminated some factors at this point, so you can just disregard them. For now, I'll assume I, I need all seven. So, And then notice it says add axial. Okay. Well, what add axial means, I'll just click on it. And when it says supply an axial value, um, just use the default for now. We're going to talk about what our, why we call these axial uh, points later on when we discuss what's called response surface designs. Okay. Make the table, and this new design gives us the ability to estimate squared terms. So you can, you can add axial points to virtually any design, and their only purpose is to estimate squared terms. Well, I'm going to close some windows here and catch up with where we are in the notes. Okay. Well, Augment um, has that other option, which is simply called Augmenting, in which you tell the design what are the additional effects you would like to estimate. So again, I'm going to go back to Jump, and I'm going to grab the coding experiment. And I'm going to go to DOE, augment the design. Again, I'm going to put in all six factors because I can't eliminate any of them from consideration at this point. Thickness is the response. 
again I'm going to select group the runs into a new block and I'm going to select augment okay so when I select augment what happens is that I decide what are additional runs I want so here I said I want to estimate some of the two-way interactions okay so if I just go So at this point, I want to estimate. I don't want it. I want it to stay in this mode. It doesn't want to do that. Okay. So let's pick some. So suppose I want to estimate the interaction of A and B. So I highlight them in the factor table. Cross them. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant to hit A. Then B in the effects table. And cross. Okay. And maybe I want to estimate D, um, let's see, A and B. Let's say I want to estimate A and C. Okay. In other words, I just keep specifying different effects that I want to estimate. So I want to estimate um, D and E. You'd have to decide in advance what these interactions are and then maybe I want to estimate E and F. But I'm just picking different interactions. By the way, if I wanted to, I could also add squared terms. You can add whatever you want to the design. So I could say I want to add the squared term in E. I'm just this is just for illustration. So next, it jumps telling me enter the number of runs including the original 11. Jump is indicating it can do this in as little as 15 runs. So I'll say make the design. It's looking to see if it can find a design that will meet those requirements. And there's the design. Okay. And it only required an additional four trials. So that's basically what augmenting does. You just augment your design. And in the augment platform, the option called augment lets you tell Jump, here are the additional effects I want to estimate. Then it finds some additional runs that will let you estimate those effects. And this can result in some very efficient designs. Finally, I'm going to go back to jump and look at one more thing. Okay. And that is generating two uh, fractional factorials in jump. To do that, go to the DOE menu, go down to screening, because these are often called screening designs. We're going to say more about that going forward. And I'm going to pick seven continuous factors. So I click continue. Always select this option, choose from a list of fractional factorials. Okay. So it's telling me I could do as little as eight. That's a two to the seventh minus four. So I'll pick that one for illustration. Continue. Then you can look at the aliases and you can see this is a heavily alias design and it shows you the generating rules meaning these are the four interactions that were used you can change the generating rules I generally say don't unless you really have a reason to and you know what you're doing so I'm going to back up and this time I'm going to pick 16 so this is a 2 to the 7th minus 3. Jump is telling you, by the way, this is resolution 4. So two ways are alias with two ways, but not with main effects. So this is actually the minimum design I would start with, a 2 to the 7th minus 3. Click Continue. 
Again, I'll look at the aliases. And you can see two ways are alias with two ways. We call this resolution four. And the nice property here is main effects are free of aliasing. And this may help us sort out what is really active and what is not. So at this point, you could add center points if you wanted to. We really don't fully replicate uh, fractional factorials and make the table. And if we create the model, we run the model scripts. Jump is giving us the biggest model that is possible. You cannot add anything to this model in terms of two-way interactions or higher because those are aliases. Okay. So that's basically, it's very easy to create fractional factorials in Jump. Just use the screening platform in the DOE menu.